Oh, oh, big old muddy puddle coming up. Muddy puddle test. damage on the tip of that. Actual materials come out, there's cracks here, there's holes there. I actually had to repair that with glue. These are my beloved Salomon Speed Cross 4 trail of fell running shoes and they have been through the mill over the last year and it's time I need to upgrade. And to be honest, they were not the ideal shoe for running normal trails. They're, they were more for running off trail up mountains and, and in places where your feet are gonna get really wet. More harsh conditions, they're not really for light trails. So I decided I needed to get a, a new pair of light trail shoes. Something that I could do, you know, serious distance on trail. And my natural choice was going to be the Hoka or Hoka Speed Goat Four, four or five, oh, I can't remember which one, whatever the newest version of the speed goats are. Lots and lots of cushioning, super comfy, lots of bounce in the road, feel like you're running on air. And then I crashed my drone. And that's costing me a hundred pounds to fix. So I didn't really much feel like spending 125 pounds on the speed goats. So I decided to conduct an experiment. Can I get a decent pair of trail running shoes for under 50 quid, under $50. This is what I bought. Were these? These are the New Balance, it's like, it's like a stupid code, MT5. These are the New Balance MT, <laughs> I can't remember things. These are the, uh, the New Balance MT590 trail running shoes and they cost me only 40 pounds. You actually get them for 35 online. Now, if you're not somebody who runs, you might think 40 pounds sounds like a lot of money to spend on a pair of, of trainers. And um, if you're somebody who runs, you will realize how cheap this actually is. Most of the shoes I've bought in the past few years have cost me over 100. These are the cheapest I've bought in a while. And one of the things I've always wanted to do with my channel is to encourage just ordinary pe people, casual people, to get out and run. And, you know, to be honest, it's a lot to ask for someone to go and spend a hundred pounds. So I thought, put my money where my mouth is and buy a pair of shoes around about the price that I would expect somebody looking to get into the sport to spend. So I spent 40 pounds in these, but the question is, are they any good? I've done two miles in them to test them. They didn't fall to bits. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these on a 10 mile run over road and trail, lots of variant terrain, wet, dry, and I'm gonna take you with me and let you know what I think. Hello, this is nearly two weeks later after I recorded that intro, and in between I've been sick and actually haven't run for a week, this is my first time getting out, so. I had planned to go and run 10 miles in these shoes today. That's not gonna happen. Wouldn't get around it. Wouldn't be a good idea if I've been sick. So I'm gonna do five miles around Glenara Forest Park. I'll be on trail. There's wooden boardwalk and a bit of road at the end. My legs are tired. So let's see how these cheap shoes get on. So first thoughts on these shoes so far. They feel grand. They're, uh, they're pretty grippy underfoot. They're incredibly lightweight. So, so much lighter than my Salomons, but then they're also not waterproof in any way <laughs> or windproof. I can feel the air sort of coming through my feet, so I'm not sure if I want to run in these in uh, really cold weather or in snow. No. Oh. Laces come out less than a mile in. That's something. I've been used to not having to deal with for a long time with my Salomon shoes because they use the lock laces. So once your feet are locked in, those laces are never coming out. I'm onto the steps now at Glenariff. This is typically somewhere that can be quite slippy, especially when you get to the very, very bottom. It suddenly changes into a wooden platform. And at the time about a year ago, I came down to the bottom, hit the decking, ran around the corner and nearly hit the deck because it was just slick with leaves. So we'll see how grippy it is once I get down there. There's the waterfall. Whoa! My feet slipped on that. 
Wasn't expecting to slip back there. Let's see what this is like. Ah, they're okay. They're not super, super grippy on the boardwalk or on. This is actually worse here, the concrete. I slipped in the concrete back up there. But that said, you know, most shoes would slip on that, so it's all right. I'm onto the climb now and oh, I feel horrendous. <laughs> it's, it's amazing just how much you can lose your training after just being sick for a couple of weeks. Oh, amazing views though. But I gotta go up here. <laughs> I'll see you at the top. Lots of quite big, chunky gravel in this part of the forest. I could feel it through these shoes, but, but I wouldn't say it was particularly painful. Oh, oh, big old muddy puddle coming up. Muddy puddle test. Well, that worked a little bit better than expected. <laughs> well, I can confirm they're definitely not waterproof. Uh, how do I get up from here? Okay. Okay, so despite absolutely nailing the GoPro with that muddy splash, that was a successful test because I did not slip in the mud and land on my head, so keep going. And this, this is the, this is the top of the hill victory leap test. And that's me finished. That was a solid four miles and I'm ready to give my conclusion on these <coughs> New Balance trail shoes. And basically in summary, I'm impressed for, what did I pay? 35, 40 pounds? Oh, I can't remember now, I'll put it in. They were, they were great, they did the job. They were grippy, they were comfortable. They felt nice and soft underfoot. There was no rubbing, no hot spots, no like feeling that you're gonna start getting a blister at any point. Um, and I didn't fall over, die, or anything like that in them. So, yeah, I'm pretty impressed. The only downsides I found are the laces came out on me, which, well, if you double knot them, that's not gonna happen. And they're not waterproof, so my feet are soggy. But waterproof run shoes do tend to be a lot more expensive. And if, unlike me, you avoid the puddles and you're only running on sort of fire track trails, generally you don't actually get your feet wet. Waterproof matters a bit more if you're going like off trail on the fell where you're gonna be squishing down in the mud or in really wet grass. So yeah, if you're thinking of getting into trail running for the first time or you just want like a casual pair to train in, I would recommend these, the New Balance trail shoes. And they cost me, they literally cost a, a quarter, yeah. They, was it a quarter? A quarter? Yeah, they literally cost about what, a third, a quarter of what I would normally spend on a pair of trail running shoes. Now the final test will be how many miles will I get out of these? How long will they last? I typically get about a year out of a pair of trail shoes, but if these only last six months, that would still be worth it. So yeah, I'm impressed.
if there's anyone who's watching this who's already trail running and has already bought like a cheaper pair of trail shoes and are liking them i'd like to know let me know down in the comments uh, because it'd be useful for other people who are thinking about getting into trail running options are always good so and that is it whoa I dropped it. That is it from me. I am going to get back to the car, get the heat on and get home because I'm still a little bit sick and I expect lots and lots of sympathy in the comments. I'm so sick. <gasps>